The Kursk offensive operation of the Ukrainian armed forces has sowed doubts among the Russian elite. This was stated by the heads of the US and UK intelligence services Bill Burns and Richard Moore, the Financial Times reports. Thus, the director of the American CIA, Burns, noted that the Kursk operation was a significant tactical achievement that raised the fighting spirit of the Ukrainians and exposed Russia's weaknesses. This has raised questions among the entire Russian elite among where this all is heading. The US intelligence chief said, in turn, MI6 chief Moore said it was a typically brash and bold move by the Ukrainians to try to change the game. Earlier, President Volodymyr Zelensky said that the Kursk operation was a response to Russian plans to create a buffer zone on Ukrainian territory. It was carried out due to the shortage of long-range weapons in the defense forces. The operation of the Ukrainian defense forces in the Kursk region of the Russian Federation continues, and the controlled zone may increase to 2,000 square kilometers, believes military political observer of the information resistance group Alexander Kovalenko. It seems to me, firstly, that the controlled zone will be increased since the Glushkovsky district is literally asking to become part of this control zone. That is, the total area can be increased to 2,000 square kilometers. He explained his opinion on the air of the Freedom TV channel. The observer noted that the Russian command is currently unable to stabilize the line of combat. According to him, for this, the aggressor country needs more resources than are concentrated there. Therefore, they will continue to redeploy units from the combat zone in Ukraine, specifically to the Kursk region. He predicts. Kovalenko believes that the Glushkovsky district of the Kursk region of the Russian Federation will gradually come under the control of Ukrainian forces. The expansion to the north and east will be slower compared to what could happen in the Glushkovsky district. This is due to the fact that the bulk of the forces and resources of the Russian occupation forces of the Kursk group are concentrated in this region. And to the south of the Seam River, they have extremely limited capabilities to provide logistical support to units as well as to strengthen their units by redeploying from a other directions and bridgeheads, the expert concluded. Мир тебе. Только что прилет. Только что. A funeral service was held on Saturday in the Ukrainian city of Poltava for victims of a Russian missile attack on a military training facility, which left 55 dead and injured 328 people, in one of the deadliest Russian strikes since the war began. Hundreds of mourners, grieving families, local residents, and officials gathered at the Cathedral of the Assumption in the city, some 350 kilometers southeast of Kiev, for the somber ceremony. Sobbing relatives, many holding red carnations, stood over the caskets placed outside the church and draped in yellow and blue Ukrainian flags. Victoria Samoylachenko, a friend of the family of victim Andriy Nazarenko, noted an increase in Russian strikes on residential areas. Russia has intensified missile and drone attacks on Ukrainian cities in recent weeks, targeting energy infrastructure across the country and causing deadly strikes in residential areas. The attacks have underscored Moscow's long-range capabilities as Ukraine braces for what will likely be another difficult winter as Russia continues to smash Ukraine's power grid, knocking out some 70% of generation capacity and rupturing heat and water supplies. 
The sound of explosions thundered over the Ukrainian capital overnight as multiple Russian attack drones were intercepted by the city's air defenses. No injuries or serious damage were reported.